maybe i have worked with any uh, commercial films or regular uh, industrial films which i regret actually there were many problems that were happened in rural areas which were unrecorded and discussed like titanic the films like jurassic park anaconda there are there is a nice rural culture in rajasthan that no one explored hi rahul hi and uh finally we meet yeah i'm so glad uh, you could join us for uh, this interview as part of a director series i'm happy to yeah. okay you know uh, i was looking at the three films that you've directed so far the end is a kind of an indie project with a little bit of horror element in the story and uh, taxi wala has uh, the supernatural element in the story and sham singer roy of course was like a period drama with uh, reincarnation so none of these films can be categorized as a very normal masala film isn't it is it like a coincidence that uh, you know different kinds of subjects uh, were chosen by you or uh, did you make a conscious effort to say that i won't do the regular normal masala films uh it it, it is a conscious effort and okay. i i am not a fan of a regular uh, commercial films i am mm-hmm. now um, uh, being a huge fan of films like nene uh, whatever i like to watch on my choice like on a tv or netflix like you know, that is the kind of film i want to make okay so horror was one my favorite genre and Sham Singer is something. A period films were my favorite, and science fiction was my favorite. So these are very conscious choice of stories that I chose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And next, you are writing on multiple subjects, isn't it? I right. mean, uh, I remember you mentioning in an interview soon after Sham Singer Roy that uh, there are multiple ideas that you would like to explore. Uh, there's a zombie film. There's like a time travel idea. So, so what have you been uh, writing? i'm uh, writing many things like ever since i started my journey like there were so many concepts and uh, many ideas that i've been trying to okay so immediately like i'm doing one very period rural film which was set up in you uh, know colonial period but it was not of against any freedom struggle or anything there were many problems that were happened in rural areas which were unrecorded and discussed so this is something that is set up in uh, rayalaseema mm-hmm. rural region and it's about the people the culture the aesthetics so this is probably one of that uh, very authentic royal cinema film that i wanted to present okay. because in the regular films like every time when you sh- show royal cinema it's all just about faction and people with uh, long strong muscle and so it is not that kind of film this is very cultural film mm-hmm. but it it will it will deal with many uh, action sequences and all but it's about it's a historical period uh, it's a folk noir kind of a genre Okay okay yeah, that is one subject i'm doing and there is another social subject which is set up in a contemporary period that's about uh, 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 a government employee that is one subject i'm doing and there is a zombie film that i've been uh, <laughs> trying to <laughs> uh, work that that's happening now so i got producers who are very interested to do that uh, so that is one happening and there is another science fiction time travel uh which is on a very bigger scale that that uh, that is also in line yeah these are few ideas i'm working okay yeah. since you brought up the topic of rayalaseema hmm. uh you know while growing up in the 90s and early 2000s were you exposed to the mainstream telugu cinema which had a lot of these faction kind of movies i was exposed to yeah ever since um, if you see if you take any uh, film on rayalaseema in my knowledge everything is about faction everything is about uh, uh all um, you know all these revenge stories yeah yeah so there were uh, i don't remember any film that is, that discuss any any else uh, aspect of the royal cinema mm-hmm. so all the films i think explored that part of the royal cinema only yeah okay but but did it appeal to you back then yeah it yeah, i used to enjoy them a lot okay, because okay. It, there is a sense of false pride in it like uh-huh. royal cinema people are like this and but you take me like i'm from royal cinema but i'm completely opposite to what they portray how royal cinema people are mm. so there are there is a nice rural culture in royal cinema that no one explored like okay. because the people are very soft very sensitive very uh, you know loving and, and they, they give you a lot of respect to people mm-hmm. if you, if you take people in cities or any other places like what i observed personally is like even I recently have been to these villages for my research of work and all if you ask for a small thing like if you ask a route or something or if you ask for any doubt or anything mm-hmm. people will make sure from the rural royal cinema region these people will take walk along with you they'll make sure you will reach the place or make sure you get what you want what you're looking for make sure you're comfortable and everything only then they'll resume to their works okay so they're very nice people so that is something 
no one discussed about that is something i wanted to also show okay yeah. okay so you grew up watching te telugu cinema and then uh, you also said that you know uh, when you watched uh, say mani ratnam's yuva and then star wars titanic that kind of opened up your world to different kinds of storytelling and movies isn't it uh, do you remember the few movies that kind of made you feel oh there's so much more to be you know watched uh, and consumed in cinema right yeah so uh the the initial films like that i remembered like you know that made me a storyteller that uh, that made me you know explore into the world of filmmaking and you know that is like uh, ever since i was a kid like i had this imaginative things i was a little creative with paintings or mm -hmm. writing something and participating in uh, stage plays and all, all mm -hmm. it was there mm -hmm. so coming to movies like the films like titanic the films like jurassic park anaconda uh in my town karnool like you know where uh, there there was in the tvs the ads for like you know lakshmi ganpati films and with this so i used to enjoy these kind of outwardly things like suddenly some big dinosaur came out of the screen and, and i used to dream about think about those films for like weeks and weeks imagining and uh, you know still staying there not coming out so there were so many such films back then star movies was one uh place where i used to you know consume lot of content where i used to enjoy like terminator all these action films that's why i like like uh, i don't like subtle films i like you know little uh films that shake you up that made you uh, that illusion kind of worlds and all that that reflects in my choice of stories also right now yeah so back then did you watch all these hollywood films in english or the telugu dubbed versions which released in karnool no uh in theaters i think uh, no they were dubbed dubbed versions only okay yeah. okay but in the star movies like they were uh, english like there were not even subtitles i i i don't used to get the dialogue part of it well mm -hmm. but still i used to enjoy just the action part and what's happening in the story okay yeah. okay but you know you took the typical btech route and then you worked in a software company you joined infosys and then you discovered uh, that you know you were more passionate towards cinema started making short films and learned almost on the job isn't it correct uh, by making short films and then while making the indie project the end as well would you say that was your kind of film school because you didn't get a formal training in film school totally mm -hmm. like even till my last film like sham singh was also a training for me okay like uh, i call all my previous films like no matter what everything is my student film like it's like every uh, film teaches you constantly because i haven't been to film school maybe i haven't worked with any uh, big direct i mean any uh, commercial films or regular uh, industrial films which i regret actually mm -hmm. because it it's it's very taxing while you working on a film on your own and uh, it was very difficult for me because i'm from a town also like uh, when i come to hyderabad the competition was tough the filmmakers here were well educated they were they had exposure and they had i was very uh, shy kid and i was not good with my communication with people i was uh, uh, very low confident to interact with people and you know mm -hmm. sell my stories and you know, where i could say like and i can do this okay i'm very bad with narration giving a story like and i can't tell like you know i'm going to do this but so this was like every film i learned like mm -hmm. from the end uh, i understood like how the people from industry are looking like you now how they work and what is uh, a release of a film like what it takes to release a film what is the distribution how many sections of people are there in the industry that was like a big thing for me when taxi wala like i was interacted with the big production houses and that's where i understood like oh this is how the production houses function this is a, there is a structure to the industry mm -hmm. and uh, this is what the uh, the market will be like this is what the economics of the industry is uh, like that's what i learned from the taxi wala and coming to sham singh right that's when i could focus on storytelling okay. because rest of the things are taken care there are people to you know it, it was not much of burden on me and i could really go into the depths of uh, some character or story where i could uh, there is a that's when i learned like through films you can literally transform people into another world uh, you can really make the characters that some people can take along with them throughout their lives you know that's going to empower them and it's going to change their lifestyle and films have that power so next time when i'm writing like i should make sure like you know make a film that's going to live long okay. rather than make more money yeah so every film is a learning experience okay when you look back at the experience of working on the end and even taxi wala both had its own fair share of uh, you know troubles that any new filmmaker would face 
in terms of navigating the industry, understanding distribution and how production works and so on and so forth. Uh, did you wish that, uh, you know, at any point did you think that, you know, it was like a huge leap of faith to give up a stable software job and enter into cinema without that proper backing or like the grounding? Uh, were there any kind of, uh, like say, uh, moments when you felt that you needed some guidance or? Totally, Andy, okay. yeah. There were times when I regretted, like I felt like I did I made, made a mistake, like should I go back? But uh, there is, uh, there was no comfort zone for me in software also. I okay. was very unrest uh, d during that job. So I had no other option but to fight this through. Mm -hmm. Like, because I was, I know that I'm not good with anything else and apart from telling stories and making films. So I said like, because my biggest problem is like, it, filmmaking more than about just concentrating on the art or something the majority of your energy is taken by you dealing with people mm -hmm. you dealing with the situation and you know just uh, uh, running that day it's about how uh, efficient you are you on just that day so that is not how a storyteller or a artist function so that was something that was my biggest challenge when I come to uh, tell my stories so back then, like uh, that was very uh, tough job decision to make to come out of the job and all. But the only thing that was driving is like I need to tell stories okay. somehow. Like okay. let's do this. And, yeah. Okay. So your biggest film till date was Sham Singh Roy, and it's been more than a year since uh, it released and people watched it widely in the theaters as well as on digital platforms, right? When you look back at the film now, uh, do you think you would have done certain things differently? Because one of the major complaints that people had about it say, was that Vasu's character was almost like rushed through because the entire focus was on Sham and Rosie, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, yeah. How do you look at the situation? I agree to that. Yeah, because uh, Initially, the idea of telling Sham Singhrai was like how Vasu discovers his Sham mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. But the Sham and Rosie was so strong, while at the edit table, we felt like the, the USB of the story lies in this, this part of the story. And the rest of the reincarnation part is something that we have seen already in the other films. Right. That is not the USB. So we felt like, I think, better to pitch this high and keep that as a something, uh, you know, that you know this, let's look into this. That is the play we played in the edit. That's why the first half or the, you know, the uh, Vasu's uh, whole circle looks a little weaker mm -hmm. when you compare to the Sham. So definitely that is like when I had this opportunity of uh, uh, discussing this for a, with a Hindi producer to remake, like I felt like I'm going to redo this. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, this, this is what I want to work. I'm going to rework on the Vasu's character and make it a little more uh, um, uh, part of this whole Sham episode and all. Yeah, that is something I can, I felt like I should have done differently. Is there a remake uh, on the cards? No, no. The, no. That, that was discussed, but uh, after that, uh, due to the recent proceedings, like recent films and uh, their results in the Hindi, like we dropped that idea. Okay, yeah. okay. I think people love the Sham and Rosie character and the period Bengal Telugu kind of a, you know uh, setting so much so that they wanted like a spin-off of that itself as a feature film or there were people who also tweeted to you saying do a prequel uh, showing about uh, Sham's story isn't it but even that portion when you look back at it now are there certain things that you would have done better that portions yeah I mean, uh, making wise, I have many complaints about myself, but uh, the characterizations wise and the uh, the research wise, I think I've done my best yeah. about about that world. Okay. But making wise, I could have done a lot many things better and uh, present few episodes uh, better because the characterizations because it's not about much of a story. It's about one guy and one woman, how they meet and in their own worlds and how they travel and what tra tragedy happened to them. It's just a simple uh, thing to that. So it's it's more of a documentary kind of a th uh, style and it's a biopic kind of a style. Mm -hmm. So uh, writing wise, I think I've done be good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think even the world was established very beautifully in terms mm -hmm. of production design, in terms of characterization, the uh, say the styling of both the characters and their body language. Uh, you know, a lot of thought has gone into it as well. Did you kind of go into a rabbit hole of, uh, say, discovering Bengali cinema of that era and race films? Or did you already watch some of those films so that you had like a little bit of knowledge and then you went deeper into it? 
I had this fascination towards Bengal for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because of uh, the literature advance, the social reforming, and all these things. Uh, Bengal is always a special state. Okay. Uh, because there were many people who say like Bengal thinks today and country thinks tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, even their uh, religious things or uh, political things or mm -hmm. artistical things and everything, Bengal is different. So when I get this uh, story idea from Satyadeva about the story goes to Bengal, I immediately got excited like, you know, oh, there is a chance that I could now explore Bengal more and uh, I I watched Ray's film, a couple of films like um, Apu Trilogy and everything. So I felt like I can also make something, you know, uh, you know, very at least like a, a tribute to him like you know that's why i use the royal press exactly if you see you know this guy yeah. goes and asks for a job that is exactly the scene from the apu aparajito like where this guy goes and asks for a job and later he brings his wife and that is the episode like i was like i can also do this because there is a space and so i, I had that influence but for this film like i watched the ritu panagosh films the sumranal sen films and i also watched uh, uh, guru dad's films and all this you know where this age old characters how they look and there is dignity to the man and how this bengal well educated uh, youth were back then mm -hmm. so that was inspiration and uh, yeah i did i did a lot of research regarding that luckily i got the time during the covid where you know i could read books about it watch a lot of uh, content and you know research about the people and get the details about it now this story came to you from what satyadev satyadev uh, janga had written already isn't it so uh, how comfortable are you with fleshing out a story that somebody else brings to you as opposed to you thinking and conceptualizing and writing an entire story and script by yourself no i feel that is uh, that's a, such a privileged thing to get a, mm -hmm. a very good idea okay. from any uh, somebody else that that is my first priority because uh, developing an idea and working on it, sitting through making it into a story takes a lot of time mm. because I, may, I myself enjoy directing films rather than writing. Okay. Yeah. So it's like writing, but writing is taking a lot of time in my career. Like, so I felt like I would like to do the direction and do the last draft and, you know, get into it and do like that. But if I, if I get a good story from any other writer, I, any day I'll prefer that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that collaborative space is something which you are very much open to. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Totally. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people in this industry who prefer to say that it's story, screen, screenplay, dialogue, direction by a certain person. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not something that uh, I'm, you're so stuck upon. No, not at all. Okay. Because there are great writers, there are better writers. Mm -hmm. Because my, I know my literary standards, I know how much I read, I, how much world I know is very limited. But if there is, there is a writer who knows better than me and who can write better than me, that will help me make a better film. I can direct on that. Okay. So that is anyways my choice. Because growing up, I spent most of my time learning so far in my last decade or whatever in learning direction, not in writing. Yeah. Writing is definitely something uh, a very uh, experienced person should do. Mm -hmm. Writing is a, a, it, it's an ocean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is, when you write, is it like a solitary uh, job or does your team also weigh in during the drafting process itself? Uh, I'm so not comfortable with sitting and, you know, exchanging ideas and uh, okay. uh, writing like a team. But uh, I take help of writers, like, but very choosy, like I'm, I can't gel up well with uh, regular writers and uh, who bounce a lot of ideas at once, like I can't take them already. So uh, it's like when I find a writer who I can vibe with, like we, uh, I work like this, like, you know, I do my first draft and I'll, we discuss and after a week we'll catch up again for just a couple of words. Mm. So what's happening, how you think and I think and so probably I think we should go in this direction and later we'll catch up again after a week like that. It, I can't sit with every day with the writers and, you know, make points and I don't function like that. It's a very solitary job for me. Okay. I sit and I go into my own space and I dig my characters and that's why I write. Okay. Yeah. In a span of about eight to nine years per se, you've directed three films. Is that also conscious choice because of the different kinds of subjects that you picked up or uh, have you said no to a few offers <coughs> that came your way to do some quick projects? Yes, I have uh, said no to many projects mm -hmm. that came my way. Mm -hmm. I have uh, given many stories by production houses and from artists like who, what they liked. And mm -hmm. after Sham Singh even after Taxi Wala, there were quick projects that I could do. Okay. But I felt like uh, until unless that completely sinks in me, where you know, I could feel every part of that story or the world, I cannot function. I cannot make that happen. Just uh, I can't turn just a script into a film. 
I need to really feel the total thing and I have to write, rewrite again and mm -hmm. I have to own it and make it my own. Only then I can make it. In this process, I'm losing a lot of time, but it's okay. But uh, because whatever I do, that one film should be... Uh, that I understood from Shyam Singh, right? Like, you know, you, even you take two or three years, and but make one film uh, where people can enjoy that mm -hmm. that I'm experiencing with Shyam Singh, right? Yeah. There was a time when uh, you know new directors who came into the industry were under certain kind of pressure by the industry per se, saying that you know, okay, you've debuted with a small film which has got attention, but next you should scale up and do like a big film. You should do this many number of uh, films in so many years so that your uh, market value and brand value increases. But nowadays we don't see young directors succumbing to that kind of a trend. They kind of uh, you know have their say in what projects they want to do. Is that an easy space to navigate to say no and to not be judged by the established producers or uh, you know the other industry forces? I think if you observe uh, industry is something in my last 10 to 15 years of my observation in, about the Telugu industry and the Indian industry. Mm -hmm. Every five years it's changing okay. because when I entered like the situation was different. Mm -hmm. Whatever you, uh, uh, when I uh, start, first starting, uh, mm -hmm. start telling stories like industry was like when I, uh, they're just after a hit. Like okay. if there is a hit film, they're only interested in the, that kind of cinema, that kind of stories again and again. They used to do that. After a while, uh, probably after another five years or something, they are open for the new ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, any new director with a new exciting idea, they're very open for that. After again five years, they're like the scale films have come. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, uh, if one or two films come and they change the uh, business, suddenly the it'll change the whole trend of the entire industry. So I think the young filmmakers of every time they should adapt to the situation or if they have a strong story or a strong voice, they should just make and make, be a trendsetter. So probably th th there is no uh, hard and fact rule here that mm. something anyone can follow. It's like you do what you're best and <laughs> God knows what happens. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh all right. Now, post Bahubali and then now again post Pushpa and RRR, we've seen that perception that, you know, uh, those big spectacle films is something which Telugu cinema is very good at. And, you know, so there are a lot of people who want to put forth those kind of films, isn't it? Uh, how do you look at this situation? Because in Telugu cinema, we know for a fact that there are a few limited number of indie projects that come out once in a while. There are a few big films and, there, and then there are a lot of other uh, say medium budget films with family dramas and very localized stories as well. How do you look at the post uh, Bahubali kind of a situation in Telugu? I think post Bahubali and uh, along with it also the Covid is something. These two things change the audience consumption of content very differently. Okay. And uh, they kind of opened up to wider content, smaller content and all kinds of content at once. Mm -hmm. Also, they, they have seen some, this is a, a 70mm can offer this kind of a film to us. Mm. So uh, now the situation has become what I should watch on theatre, what I should watch on my phone or TV. So I think uh, audience have marked that line mm -hmm. very clearly. Mm -hmm. So post Bahubali particularly, if people are coming to the theatres, they are expecting like, we have already seen Bahubali. Mm. We have already seen something at that scale. So you should engage us to that level. And either it should be spectacular emotion or action or uh, graphics or something. Uh, yeah. They're expecting like theatre is something uh, for that kind of film. Mm -hmm. There is space for that kind of film. Mm -hmm. That's why even I feel after Bahubali, my observation is the Marvel films are doing very well. Mm -hmm. They are collecting great numbers and all these things. Ever since like from Titanic or Jurassic Park also, they used to get great collections than local commercial films because the spectacle is something uh, that the theatres are made for is or at least the depth of the emotion or something where a dark room can make you sit for three hours. If it's a normal simple film, I think even I can watch it in my screen or uh, anywhere in my comfort, in my time before mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. So people are just demarking the lines very clearly. So that's what happened after Bahubali. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, say so. What you're trying to say is that uh, you need certain something special to draw the audience back into the theaters, isn't it? Correct. So when you mount such a story, uh, you know you need like a good story, a good production house to bank it, and then a bankable actor, and so on and so forth. 
even then what are the other challenges that will come with mounting a big film like a spectacle film that will offer something new to people the challenges would be like uh, first of all like it's it's like the same for any job thing like you know what is your experience with a big film or this much of budget mm. what is your experience in handling a star or their fans expectations what is your experience in uh, handling this much of crowd okay. or the action sequences the producers and the artists are looking at this skill set of the director so what what was his previous record of films he has done this kind of genre can he handle this kind of genre mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. but at the same time like uh, people are also open for uh, all kinds of directors and all kinds of stories now nobody is saying uh, judging you up front they are taking their time to listen to you mm -hmm. understand you analyze you mm -hmm. and you know keeping in their uh, uh, priority list like um, yeah it is open for everyone now everyone can go and pitch to anyone if you have a great story or bigger story or anything mm -hmm. so i find uh, uh, you, you just have to somehow sell your thing okay yeah to the production houses and uh, artists okay yeah. but there's also this kind of a trend isn't it when one film in a certain genre succeeds everybody wants to try and do something on a similar line mm -hmm. say you know narrate a lot of masculine kind of stories just because pushpa or uh, you know kgf did so well mm -hmm. how do you break away from that clutter say hypothetically speaking if you were coming up with an idea which is big enough in scale let's say your time travel story itself mm. but it's not typically fitting into that kind of a you know like like the kgf or the pushpa kind of a mold mm. so how do you sell it to a production house unfortunately no see the problem is like the moment you are uh, asking for certain budget okay. you also have a sell sellable plan to it mm -hmm. because you can't uh, make a big scale of film without a proper product uh, protagonist or uh, Uh, a plot or uh, a protagonist or someone where you cannot connect to not a mass of the wider masses of india cannot connect to mm -hmm. because how will you get the money back that is the first thing a filmmaker should answer to okay so and we people from india like we are so used to the stories of heroes okay because ramayana and mahabharata are the two stories that every child starts their life with mm -hmm. because that are the first films for uh, consciously or subconsciously that we keep listening to uh in our uh, stories even if you take christianity or even so islam there is a hero to that uh, there is one guy that dictates the whole story in the form of religion mm -hmm. because always the stories are uh told through the protagonist so that is important that's where the concept of hero is coming from so he is the savior and uh, Uh, literally so that's where this whole uh, uh, commercial cinema has come from mm -hmm. but just that how how good are you in making for example mandatnam sir makes all kinds of commercial films but look at his protagonist and his uh, journey and everything it's very beautiful the, there are aesthetics there is artistic value to it and all so if you if you are good like that you can always tell a commercial cinema in a beautiful way mm -hmm. you don't have to just uh, make a typical routine you know uh, sound uh, kind of a film so as long as you have a good story a good production uh, protagonist and and you have good this aesthetic values and all you don't have to worry about making a commercial film okay so when you are making a different kind of film where you, where you don't have a hero kind of a story uh keep it your budget limited mm -hmm. such that you know you i think I, i think it's not possible to make a spectacle film without a yeah. proper protagonist and a, that yeah. kind of a story ha huh. yeah so where do you see this kind of a trend going in the next few years or so as you said there was like a churn during the pandemic as well one was the post bahubali phase and then again during the pandemic people thought uh you know there are people ready to consume content on digital platforms in theaters and then there were different kinds of stories being mounted isn't it hmm. now post pandemic everybody is still figuring out what works for theater what works for digital and digital platforms at least for telugu they are not picking up very uh say uh, fresh uh, stories without well known names because they've burnt their hands by buying too many projects so how do you uh see the whole balance coming about in the next few years i'm actually a little worried about it and like mm -hmm. even if you watch netflix like maybe an a year ago or two years ago there were thing uh, certain uh, web series or films which were very picky and something is good coming mm. now every friday they are also dumping a lot of content into uh, their platforms okay. that's happening with every platform 
and now audience are also confused what to do everything is cutting a good trailer everything is casting good uh, thing and everything is putting budget mm -hmm. and probably like uh, if you remember like uh, there was this kind of a satellite thing happened a few years ago yeah that's what happening with the ott now right there's too much of dumping everything into it will saturate at a point and again the audience will turn into something else okay so they'll again look back for something else and this will keep on diverting so even i have no clue like you know what's going to the future because suddenly everyone started doing bigger and bigger scale projects and all mm. people would look for something new again so it's all about uh, what's going to be the next new thing rather than the big thing okay yeah okay okay yeah. Okay, what are the kind of films that you want to make? When I ask this, I don't mean in specificity of genres per se, but in terms of, say, uh, you know, giving out films that will be remembered for a long time. Is that something that you're looking at? Yes, yeah. Okay. My audience into a certain world. Okay. Uh, I know, forget their reality for a while. The story is all about uh, 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 skipping your reality and there is an alternate reality, there is alternate characters and where, you know, just go through it, undergo something, some emotions and uh, connect with your emotions, your deep subconscious emotions to it and, you know, come out of it, feel that uh, emotional ride. Uh, whatever the genre you chose to watch, just go into that and come out and such that it's like one therapy to you. Hmm. Whatever you expect, you wanted a comedy, a comical therapy. You wanted a sadness or that one, an action. So all Navarasas, like you know, every rasam, every genre offers that thing. So hmm. you go into it, get it, and and you will feel like you know, I paid this and I got this kind of experience. So okay. this is the story that I'm going to keep with me for a longer time. So that is like uh, better than uh, material that you buy for your house or a car that you phone. So these are like something, um, uh, these are like the material that you buy for your soul. Okay. Cinema has that kind of a uh, thing. That is the kind of cinema I want to make where, you know, mm -hmm. my audience can uh, take this film to their hearts and mm -hmm. probably carry it for their lifetimes. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, when we talk about the last two films that you directed, a little bit of your uh, personal uh, life, n not personal life, I mean incidents that happened to you, also found their way into, uh, you know, like triggered a story idea, maybe. Uh, Taxiwala, before you made Taxiwala, you had quit Infosys, you were uh, considering whether to, take, to drive a cab as a part-time job. And, uh, you know, you went online, looked at uh, cabs that were available, cars that were available, and you found a car which looks very good. The specifications were good, but it was available at a throwaway price. And then that triggered a doubt in you saying, you know, thinking, is it possessed? So something like that triggered the, the story of Taxiwala and it went in a different direction. And if you take Vasu's uh, characterization in Sham Singaroy, it could be you, it could be any aspiring filmmaker who is shifting from the IT industry to you know making short films and then trying to get a grounding in cinema isn't it are there other uh, you know real life uh, incidents or happenings that kind of found their way into the stories that you've narrated so far yes yeah mm -hmm. uh, like in the sham singer character like uh, the beginning whole well episode mm -hmm. or the kind of some ideologies that sham talk yeah those were uh, something that came from my father so my dad used to tell me the that same scene that happened in their village okay. where um, he used to do that kind of little rebel activities in the village and so i pitched from the, those scenes like those stories okay yeah and uh, the in the end there is one scene one horror scene where in the water tank scene where the one guy uh, climbs up and that is something that I experienced. Mm -hmm. So these are the little things that I draw from my real life activities and um, I'll put in my stories. Okay. And when I get a block or something, I'll keep myself there and I'll think like, you know, how will I react to this? Okay. So what if I am that character and what will I do? Mm -hmm. So that's how I uh, write. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how long before we see your next film? In what stage is it? It's already the first draft is ready. Mm -hmm. I could figure out the length and breadth of the story. Okay. Now I'm working on the depth of it. Okay. So I pitched it to the production house. I'm, I'm doing with my three movie makers. Mm -hmm. So we are pitching to the artist now. So we have discussed on the budget and scale of it. So okay. probably like uh, I'm start shooting it by the end of this year maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to it, Rahul. I'm sure there'll be something interesting that you will put up. Thank you, India. It'll be a good story. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you. Visit. Thank you so much.